On our private sector utility partners, we got about 61,000 uh, without power right now that we know of. Uh, we have folks standing by and ready to move as soon as it's safe to do so, and Director Stallings will fill you in a little more on that here at the end of the briefing. As you all know from current events, Idalia made landfall on the Florida Gulf Coast as a Category 3 uh, this morning uh, before dropping to a Category 2, and currently it's Category 1 uh, as it continues to move throughout Georgia. We feel like that will fall to a tropical storm by the time it leaves us and heads into South Carolina. It entered Georgia around 10 a.m. Uh, we're thinking that it's going to get to South Carolina between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. this evening. There's been a heavy impact in South Georgia with heavy rainfall and heavy winds. I know most of the people across the state of Georgia will not feel the impact of the storm, but for those that were in uh, the, the line of the storm, it is very hard hitting, and uh, we're certainly watching that as it continues to move through the state. We had multiple counties in the affected area that are seeing winds in the 70 to 80 mile per hour and some gust up to 90. We know by radar it looks like we may potentially have in some areas 9 to 10 inches of rain. The good thing is this is a narrow storm and is very fast moving, so it's not sitting on us and dumping uh, even more rain than that at one time. So we're thankful for that. Uh, just to give you some logistics on what Director Stallings has been doing in my direction, we've activated the State Operations Center, as you all know, early Monday morning to monitor the storm's progress and coordinate closely with all relevant agencies that I mentioned earlier, not only at the state but also uh, at the local level, and we've certainly been in touch with our partners at FEMA. The state of emergency was issued yesterday, making state resources available to all local governments and organizations within the hurricane impact area. We have assets staged and our personnel are in the EOCs in the affected areas, and we're coordinating with our utility provide, uh, providers, and Director Stallings is going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, lastly, I would just say that we feel uh, fairly confident that we're going to be able to get crews moving here. Uh, as we move into the afternoon. We obviously have to make sure that the storm passes and it's a safe environment for them to be working. You're talking winds that drop below 35 miles an hour for folks that need to be up in bucket trucks. Uh, we certainly want to take our, uh, make sure our first responders stay safe. But as soon as those conditions are right for us to move, we have resources ready and able to do that. Uh, lastly, I would just say when the storm came into our state and counties like Eccles, in Lowndes, we've certainly seen a lot of downed trees. Um, I mentioned the power outages, and there has been some flash flooding. So we're going to continue to watch that as the storm moves. But thankfully, it is weakening now. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.